Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about how to make graphs using expressions. So we're going to be building a simple graph like this using expressions. So what's really cool is that we're building this on a text layer, so you have all of the infinite possibilities of things you can do with text animators. So let's check out another quick example. It's just a little bit different. It's an exponential scale of bits. So this is like bit depth or whatever. And these all animate with one slider. So they all grow at the same time. So this one comes in individually. And the other one is all at once. Let's take a quick look at how this is built. So everything that's important takes place in this layer. And if you're astute, you've noticed that I've had these number layers in each one of these examples. And that is how these data points are built. So what's actually really neat is that if you go here and you add another one, say 44, it will just add another one to the graph. If you add another one, 65, it'll add another one to the graph. So you can use this to build any sort of bar graph that you want. If you decide to use a different text animator, you can actually use position instead of scale like we're using here to move these text pieces up to just represent the maximum if you want. So there's a lot of different representation possible. I would recommend that you check out Kyle Hamrick's text experiments just to get an idea even of the amount of stuff that's possible with text animators, which is also why you might have seen a big push toward everybody wanting that kind of functionality to be merged with shape layers. But I digress. So let's hit EE to bring up all of our expressions. And you can see we really don't have that much on here. I'm gonna open up expressionist over here. I'm going to click on this first one and bring it in. Not overlord. These arrows, man. So you can see this is really just something simple. We're setting a string variable equal to the period character. And then there's this cool function called repeat, which I think I actually learned from Kyle. And so we're taking that string and then we're going to repeat it by this many times. And this many is name dot split. So the name of this layer dot split on the comma. So this gives us an array containing every one of these numbers without the commas. So then we just use dot length to count that number. And then we have our value for this repeat. So we get one period for each number in the name of the layer. So then our next expression, I'm going to pull into overlord and I'm actually going to close this and open this back up so you can see how this is set up because this is kind of important. So we have our base period and I'm going to turn all of these off really quickly so you can see what's going on. So we have our periods and then we have this scale up, which is this expression. So the issue here is that to use scale, the way that it works in an expression selector, you can't actually accurately tie this thing to sort of a, a maximum height as easily. So a better idea is to scale everything up to a maximum size and then use the next scale to scale it back down. So you can see that our next scale here is set to zero. So we have our period set up and then we have this animator called scale up. This is going to scale all of these periods to this maximum height we have set. And the reason for that is that the expression selector really only deals with selection, right? So if you have this set to a scale of 100 and 100, you can't really select it more to make it taller. Like that doesn't make any sense. So instead, we scale everything up to the maximum height we want it to be, and then we basically select it to reduce it. You'll see how that is in a little bit. So first, let's deal with how we maximize this. I wanted this to kind of tie to an actual like pixel value. So the first thing I did was turn this stuff off and zoom in and kind of use the info palette to get an idea of how big these are. This is going to be different for every font. But in this case, these happen to be about 19.5 pixels. So that's why this 0.195 is in here. So we have var x equal to the bar width slider divided by 0.195. So let me actually turn this back on so you can see. If we drag this, we actually change the size of that. I have this set to maintain kind of a constant gap between them all. But you can also set it up to where you can just change the bars without them moving in. So let me undo, which for some reason for me lately is not working properly and I have to actually click my timeline indicator or something to actually get the change back. Anyway, so why is this dividing by 0.195? That's because we needed a ratio of what the original size of this thing was so we can get a kind of a baseline percentage to pass back in to our scale inside this scale up text animator. So at the default size, 19.5 divided by 19.5 gives you one, and then you would multiply it by 100 so you know it's at 100%. To save some operations, I just merged the dividing 19.5 and the multiplying by 100. So that ends up being dividing by 0.195. So you might be wondering why this number isn't 1950. And that's because at the end of this, multiplying by 100 would be increasing the size of this. So if we divide by a smaller number, we'll be doing the same thing. If that doesn't make any sense, just remember 
what you're going to do is dividing by the pixel size of this thing would just appear in front of it. And anyway, after that, we do the same thing for Y, just using the max height slider that we have here. And then we just pass it X and Y, and those are our new scale values. So because of this division, we've basically kind of converted the scale of this thing using the original size of that period into a sort of pseudo pixel value for this. It's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty damn close. The closer you are with your pixel measurement, the closer you'll be. So conceptually, this is probably the most complicated part of this tutorial. So let's continue on. And here I also have an expression on tracking amount. Let's pull that in here. You can see I just have the bar width slider minus 19.5. So basically for every pixel we add to this bar width, we're also going to add a pixel to the tracking. So if you don't want this gap to be tied to this bar width, you can just add another slider and link tracking amount to that instead. And that's it for the setup of this initial part. So the rest of it's just the graph. So in here we have an expression selector and that has this expression on it, which might look a little bit familiar. So we have var values equal to name.split. So again, we're going to grab the name of this text layer, split it on those commas and keep all of these numbers. So values is now an array of these numbers. And there's something really neat that I found that I didn't know existed in JavaScript. And I'll link a page below explaining that a little bit better. But I want this max value so that whatever the highest value is on this, that is basically what we're going to assign to be 100% high. So to get that, we're going to set this variable max value equal to math.max, which takes like a list of arguments. And those arguments would normally just be numbers separated with commas. But that would require us to pass in each one of these things as an argument to this function, which kind of sucks. But I found out that instead, if you use this operator, this triple period thing, it's not an ellipsis, it's actually three periods. It's, I think it's called the spread operator or something like that. But if you use that, you can pass in an array and it will treat this array as if each item in the array is an argument in this function, which is sweet because this will then just give us our maximum value, which I also have showing here. And that's how this part is built. So the maximum is 90. I do these things every once in a while to just kind of check my variables and different things. So the maximum in this case is 90, the minimum number is 10, and there are 17 items. So then the final line, let's go through this part first. So we're going to look at this values array, and we're going to look at text index minus one. You might be wondering why we wouldn't look at text index itself. And that's because our values array starts at zero. And for some reason, text index is indexed at one in an expression selector. So instead of this being item zero, this is text index one. So we subtract that one off so that it matches our values array. So then we divide that by the max value. So if you've been watching my tutorials for a while, dividing this by the max value means that say we have 90 and we divide it by 90, then we're gonna get a value of one. So all of the other ones are gonna be a lower value up to zero. So we have a number from zero to one. And you know what that means? We can multiply it by whatever we want to extend our range. So the problem I mentioned before is that this thing is going to be scaled to zero. So that means anything that's fully selected is going to be all the way down and non-existent. So in this case, 90 divided by 90 is one. That would be fully selected if we multiplied that by 100. And that would mean our graph would be inverted. 90 would be the smallest one on here. And 10 would actually be the largest one. So to reverse that, we're going to subtract this whole piece from one. So now any value that comes out of here that's one will actually be zero. And any value that's zero will be one. So then we multiply that out by 100 because we want this as a percentage and that builds the graph. So if we click on this, hit E, you can see that we are now complete with all the expressions in this. That's all you need to know. What's also cool about text layers is that you don't just have text animators. You can also do things like put text on a path. So in this case, I quickly dumped the shape layer in just like this. I option double clicked on this guy. I dragged it down until I had a size that I wanted, which in case, this case is right about there. I right clicked on this, hit convert to Bezier. I copied this and then I went into my text layer. I drew one little dot with this. I'll just show you guys. You click that and then you open up your mask here and then you can just paste the path in. So now you can see we have that there. It's in a slightly different spot than the original one because this layer is probably shifted. But you get the idea. So what's cool about that is that then you go up into your path options, which is inside this text group. And then you just tell it to use mask one and then you can move it around using this thing if you want. Uh, just try to get it to where everything starts here. It left justified this, so it's so this is the first item, and then it continues around. And then you could change it like this if you wanted to, make these smaller, whatever. You'd have to add more data points, obviously. But at 20, it pretty much fits. And you can change this. Does the same, just like before. 
So there's a lot of interesting things you can do with that. Let me dump that out of there. That's why there was a gap there in case you were wondering. Let's see this thing. These fit perfectly to the baseline. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with this. And again, you have access to pretty much every text animator. So if you want to add something like, oh, position, just make sure it comes after all of this stuff because otherwise some weird things might happen. But you can move all into the center. They can move all out. They can explode out. Who knows? Who knows what you want to do? What's cool, you can, you can still use your ranges. So everything can all jump out. Boom. They can all push out. Or you can select just a single part of your graph if you want to. There's a lot of neat things you can do with this because you can do a ton of stuff with text animators. And that's it. I hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, make sure to subscribe because we do one every week. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. I just put a free script up there that's uh, building on one of the After Effects default ones that you can scale a bunch of comps at once. So check that out. And as always, I am Joe. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.